welcome to the Velocity Tuning Channel. Today's video is what to do if you've got a failed flash on your car. If your car's no longer starting, maybe you flashed the engine, the gearbox, whatever you're doing with a car, you're now in a position where it won't start, you're feeling pretty nervous, and you just need a bit of help. Fortunately, most people are never ever gonna need a video like this, and it's quite a rare circumstance to be in, but for you guys that are in it, I'm here to help. Firstly, you're probably not gonna wanna hear this, but most of the time that someone has a failed flash, it is down to user error. So I will also be going over some points that help to ensure that you have a successful flash. As I say, most of the time a failed flash is down to user error. And I did actually fail a flash on my own car once. I had the car at home, I began the flash, and I forgot that I had auto join turned on to the home router. So midway through the flash, my phone decided that my home internet was a better connection than what I was getting through the adapter. And there we go, I've now lost connection. Other likely things that happen is someone hasn't disabled their CarPlay. So midway through the flash, the phone decides to connect to the CarPlay or they haven't put the ignition on properly. So if you've got an E or F series car, you want to make sure that you've got the seat belt clipped in, you've got the hazards on. If you're on a newer car like this, it's technically considered a G series platform, you wanna make sure that you've pressed the ignition three times and it's come up saying diagnostics mode. Also, if it's your first flash on the car, it's important to make sure that you've got good battery. So if you haven't driven the car for a while, make sure you take it for a drive because the alternator is going to give it a good charge up. Make sure you've got some form of battery stabiliser there also so that you know that you are going to be able to maintain good battery voltage while you're flashing the car. Also, if you've got the heaters on full blast or you've got a heated seat on, turn all that off because it's going to draw additional electric whilst the engine is not running. If you're using something like a mobile phone, make sure you've got the Bluetooth turned off so you're just using the Wi-Fi. And you could have something that's not even your fault happen, like maybe a phone call comes through halfway through the flash and it's enough to disturb it. So if possible, put the phone into airplane mode with just the Wi-Fi active and that's going to ensure that nothing else is interrupting with the car whilst you're flashing. Opening and closing doors mid-flash, forgetting to leave the key present in the vehicle, all of these are going to cause issues as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate with this car now what to do if you have an unsuccessful flash and just how easy it is to get it back to life. Okay, so let's flash the car. On my personal car, I switch all my custom maps using MHD. I love it, it's a great platform. So, here's my key, here's my adapter. We're going to go over to the car. Now, when I do a flash, I don't like to sit in the car. I like to be as far away from anything that I could knock as possible. So, press the ignition button three times. Diagnostics mode active. Now, I can tell you that I've already got CarPlay turned off on this, but we will check to make sure that I'm not automatically going to connect to the router in the workshop. And I can see that that's disabled. So I'm good to go. I'm good to flash. Now, what application I'm using for flashing, it don't really matter. They're all pretty much as reliable as each other. Like I say, chances of you having an issue are pretty slim. One other thing I'll mention as well, if it's your first flash, Flash the car somewhere that's safe for you. Don't just do it at the petrol station or around a friend's house or in a car park because if you do have an issue, it's going to be a lot more stressful for you. Just flash the car at home because, you know, worst ways, if you need to leave the car alone for 10, 15 minutes, you can do. So I am now connected to the adapter. And see there, I've just had a phone call come through. So that would have been potentially a problem for me. So I'm going to put this into airplane mode with just the Wi-Fi on so that I don't have to worry about that happening again. And just to be a nuisance, I might put the cold start back on. So I've just clicked flash. So what we'll do, hopefully you can see that on the video. Communicating with the DME, flashing ECU. So it's just began and oh, oh no, the adapter's fallen out of the car. So we have a look here. It's froze 
on 47%. So now I've got a failed flash. I've forced myself into that position where I'm, in a, I'm unable to start the car. So first bit of advice, if you do fail a flash, don't try to start the car. If you're trying to start the car, you're heavily going to drain on the battery. If a failed flash has occurred, the car's definitely not going to start, so don't waste your time and stress yourself out with it. Your sole intention should be getting a successful flash. Now, if it's a tune you haven't used before, I recommend trying to flash the car back to stock, unless it's one that's had like a bench unlock or a femto unlock. It's always safer to flash back to stock because you know that calibration is going to be successful. So, if we have a look here, we've got the error for flashing stopped. And just for the purpose of this video, if I try to turn on the car, So, can't turn it on, it's no good. So, what we're gonna do, is we're gonna get the adapter now. I put the ignition on three times again. Now, I'm not gonna flash this car back to stock because I know the tune works, I know that's not a problem, that's not a concern of mine. So, I'm gonna connect back onto the adapter I'm back on that. I'm going to find my tune again. And I've got two options. I've got either long right or I've got retrial failed map flash, which is saying it's going to take two minutes. So we will retry the failed flash at first because it's quicker. But like I say, you're, most of the time, this is going to be down to user error. Was you trying to flash the car without a battery stabiliser? Was you um, connected to another device mid-flash? Does your phone have a good charge on it? Does the car have a good charge? Look at everything. Get, try to get yourself in the safest position so that if you do have a problem with it, you've got a nice buffer of time to correct it. So, as you can see, the car is beginning to flash again. And this car has two ECUs, and I failed it purposely on the first ECU. So I'm now actually on to the second one, and I'm just coming to the end of that flash. So this is the fast flash option. Because the car already has this on it, I can flash the car really fast because it's just a partial flash. You're likely going to find that the first time you flash a car like this, it's going to take 10, 15 minutes. Hence why having a battery support is so important in those circumstances. But for what I'm demonstrating for you guys now, I can just show you this way. So, if you look here, we've now got success. Now, with a new flash, she might be a bit annoyed at first, but... Oh. Now, for me today, the second flash was successful because I've made sure that all the criteria to flash are met, I've made sure that everything is good. In your case though, when you go to do that second flash, you may find that it still fails. And that's likely because there's going to be something else that is playing up. So you could reset the phone, you could grab another phone if you're using a phone but you've got a laptop, grab a laptop instead. Uh, you're, gonna, you're just going to want to go through everything that you can. Make sure that you didn't drop out on your Wi-Fi connection. Even if you're in a, a really, really built up busy area, area, it could be enough to drop out your Wi-Fi connection or cause some interference with the signal. So just have a look at all of those things there and then you should find that you're able to get the car back to life. Don't worry, I can honestly say with these platforms that I'm talking about, I've never seen one not be able to be flashed and get back to life. I've never seen someone in a position where they need a new ECU or they're really in a bad way. Every time everyone's able to get it back to life, just following these simple steps. Now, in the case that you have done something that's more severe than this 
and you've now got no communication with the ECU at all, you may find that what I'm showing you here is not quite going to cut it. So a few guys that are customers of mine, I am sometimes able to dial into a computer, we use a bit of software called ESIS and we can bring that ECU back to life. We have a, a lot of tools at our disposal um, that can really hit ECUs on a different level and communicate with them on a different level. Now, if you're not one of my customers, if you're, if you're somebody else's, reach out to the support of the tool that you're using or if not, you could reach out to one of the guys that do coding and programming. So, for example, my LCI lights on this car, they were fitted by a guy at Bimmer Retro UK he is a top coder and programmer, he retrofits the craziest stuff onto cars and if you've got a dead module, reaching out to someone like him is going to be really useful because he's going to be able to likely get that back to life even without ever seeing the car. So, that's this video wrapped up for now. If you do have a failed flash, don't panic, don't stress, follow these tips and hopefully it gets you back to life. And if you are having some problems and you are really stuck, even if you're not one of my customers, feel free to reach out to me and I'll do my best to help you. Have a good day and if you haven't already, click like, click subscribe.